Typing. Karyotyping is a genetic testing procedure that analyzes chromosomes which make up one's DNA. But wait, what is DNA? DNA is like a step-by-step -step guideline for creating who you are. You inherit material from your parents that help determine traits as, such as your hair color, your height, your eyes, your skin color, and everything else. DNA is tightly packed into a structure known as chromosomes. Most people have 23 pairs of chromosomes and the 23rd pair determines the sex of the fetus. Females have two X chromosomes and males have one X and one Y chromosome. However, mistakes can sometimes happen when these chromosomes are being built, causing some of them to go missing, having abnormal shapes and sizes, incorrect sequence patterns, and extras, which all can result in genetic disorders. Now, you may be wondering, who would want to get a karyotype done? Well, a karyotype can be conducted on various individuals. For example, couples that are having trouble getting pregnant, whether that be due to male or female infertility, individuals that have specific cancers or blood disorders such as anemia, individuals with a family history of certain genetic diseases, and unborn babies who are still developing in the womb whose mothers are over the age of 35 or have a family history of genetic disorders. Generally, a pathologist or a geneticist will examine a karyogram and discuss the results. This genetic testing starts with collecting a sample of blood or other bodily fluids that will be used to analyze chromosomes. There are four different ways to obtain a sample of cells. The first is a blood test, which is generally done to test adults, infants, and children. A lab technician collects blood from the vein and sends it off to go get tested. The second test is a bone aspiration and biopsy, which is done to test for certain cancers or blood disorders. An oncologist or hematologist will perform surgery to obtain a sample of bone marrow fluid, which will then be set off to get tested. The third option is amniocentesis, which is a th where a thin needle is inserted into the amniotic sac of a pregnant woman, where a sample of the amniotic fluid will be collected to examine the fetus. The last option is chorionic villus sampling, where a needle goes into the womb and a sample of the cells from the placenta is collected and sent off to get tested. Once a sample of cells is collected, the cells multiply and divide. A cell cycle consists of five phases, prophase and prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. To create a karyogram, the cells are examined in the metaphase stage. In this stage, chromosomes condense, move together, and align in the center. Once they reach this stage, they're covered in a hypotonic solution causing the cells to burst. Geneticists look at the light and dark patterns created on each chromosome to examine specific characteristics, allowing them to identify any abnormalities. In North America, the proteins of chromosomes are loosened using an enzyme known as trypsin and a substance known as gymsi, which stains the cells, allowing the geneticists to examine the chromosomes more in depth. Individual images are taken of each chromosome and organized to create a karyogram. Chromosomes 1 to 20 are organized by size in descending order. Additionally, the sex chromosome is placed at the end of the karyogram. The karyogram is then compared to a healthy individual's karyogram to identify any abnormalities. In Canada, this genetic testing procedure can cost from about $900 to $1,500 depending on one's medical insurance plan. Some advantages of getting a karyotype done are that they are extremely accurate and are the earliest way to detect any genetic or chromosomal conditions before birth. Additionally, the information provided from a karyotype can allow an individual to make decisions about their fetus. There are minimal risks to getting a karyotype done. The bone aspiration and biopsy technique can result in bruising, bleeding, infection, soreness and tingling in the legs. The risk of amniocentesis or a chorionic villus sampling are bleeding, cramping, infection in the uterus, miscarriages, and virus transmissions, which are all very rare. So for the most part, this genetic testing is safe and has limited risks. Some chromosomal abnormalities such as Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, Pato syndrome, and triple X syndrome can be detected through karyotyping. Now, let us examine the difference between a healthy karyotype and these five karyotypes. A fetus with Down syndrome, scientifically known as trisomy 21, has an extra copy of chromosome 21. An extra chromosome in this location creates an extensive list of abnormalities such as heart defect, obstruction of the intestines, malformation of the spine or nervous system, hypothyroidism, vision and hearing issues, and intellectual disabilities. Edwin syndrome, also known as trisomy 18, has an extra copy of chromosome 18, and most babies do not live past their first birthday. Pato syndrome, known as trisomy 13, has an extra copy of chromosome 13, where many babies do not live past one year old and have physical abnormalities such as cleft lip, one ear, and many ear malformations. Lastly, triple X syndrome affects females where they, all, where they have an extra X sex chromosome causing learning disabilities, difficulty with fine and gross motor skills, seizures, and weak muscles. A deletion, 
or an addition of a chromosome can create vast number of abnormalities. Thus, genetic testing such as karyotyping is a vital technique that can help millions of families. Thank you for taking your time to learn about karyotyping.